talking about it we're talking about it chicago's talk station 890 a.m wls it's uh, probably the most magnificent station ever made it all began april 12 1924 when a chicago-based retail giant named sears roebuck and company hit the airwaves in order to target their largest customer base the midwest farming community in addition to marketing goods and services from their catalog, Sears also had the foresight to recognize the importance radio would play in the future. That vision paid huge dividends as they became one of the first large retailers of the day to mass market radio receivers to the public. The world's largest store, or WLS for short, was off and running with a 500 watt signal. It took the station less than four years to go from an obscure tiny signal to a Midwest powerhouse that was rumored at the time to reach as far away as New Zealand. By the end of the Roaring Twenties, Sears concluded they were retailers, not broadcasters, and sold the station to Prairie Farmer publisher Burridge Butler, with whom they'd shared a long business relationship. WLS's place in radio history was secured forever on the 6th of May 1937 when a young reporter named Herb Morrison was sent to New Jersey to cover what was supposed to be a routine story on the arrival of the Hindenburg. The audio of that fateful broadcast is still one of the most requested today. Oh my, get out of the way please. It's burning and bursting into flames and, and it's falling on the morning fast and all the folks agree that this is terrible. This is the one of the worst catastrophes in the world. All oh, the humanity and all. And they do United States Army Air Forces, I am happy to welcome you to Selfridge Field, tonight's broadcast by WLS. Back there in the, the 60s, early 60s, John Kennedy was facing down the Russians when they were having the Cuban Missile Crisis. And the Cubans were actually blocking a lot of the stations coming into Cuba from the United States. And the guys in Guantanamo, they were listening to us because most of the other stations couldn't get in there. Fidel Castro or his people figured, hey, this guy on that station is such a nut, he isn't going to do any bads to us. So we got through and it was great. Devon Daniels reminding you YMCA summer camps are just great. Here we are again, the animal stories. Hi, Uncle Lair. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Music Radio well, my favorite memory of WLS, probably from 73 to 77, in the dressing room with the Doobie Brothers while they did their vocal warm-ups. The, the era when WLS would broadcast a concert live from Alpine Valley. You know, it was sex, drugs, and rock and roll. In 1979, I was one of the first reporters at the scene of that DC-10 crash, an American Airlines passenger jet crash near O'Hare. That's the one where the engine fell off shortly after takeoff. I was able to follow the police and the mayor immediately after the crash onto the field where the debris from that wreckage was spread out over several blocks. That was quite an experience, one of my biggest memories of the 70s. And then fast forward to 1989, WLS became the news talk station in Chicago. And boy, did things change. There's a lot of choices out there. Technology is just going to make those choices wider and wider and wider. But talk radio is always going to play a major role because it's immediate, it's interactive, and most importantly, a great host. It's like a member of your family. Today, the WLS On Air family is comprised of some of the biggest names in the industry. Sean Hannity, Rush Limbaugh, Mark Levin, Don Wade and Roma, Jerry Ago, and the Rocon Show. There's been a great history at WLS. WLS has always served the Chicago land area through hard times, through good times, through bad. My vision of WLS serving the community in the future is to bring people information and insight into what's going on in the city and around the city 
on a consistent basis and always be the first place that they turn to find out the entire story and the real story as to what's happening in Chicago. The rich history and long tradition of success at this Midwestern powerhouse will continue long into the future as Chicagoans and listeners from neighboring states tune in to a station that has become synonymous and a part of daily life in the second city. WLS Chicago.